Brandon Sanderson can write a book. We have a decent amount of evidence to suggest that. But can he recommend a book? I found a post on his website where he recommended books for his readers to read. And since this is a post from 2012, we can go ahead and assume that it's still current and up to date and no, no checks need to be made. So today we're gonna go through that list, look at the books on it and decide definitively, does Brandon Sanderson have good taste. And then we're going to call him with the results. So there are 12 recommendations on this list. 13, if you count the one that's listed twice. I've read six of them because I'm a hack. So I've asked some of my friends to join me and they're going to weigh in on the books that I haven't read. First recommendation on the list is Terry Pratchett. His books are satirical, but they're also really rich in theme and in world, and it's they're so much fun. I laugh out loud constantly reading these books, but he also presents with this humor and with his very unique way of, of utilizing <laughs> language. He presents these ideas and then says, but why? Or presents concepts and asks us to think about them a little bit more. And a running theme in his books is just kindness. It's just seeing the humanity in each person and in their life situations, and I just love it. So this is an excellent recommendation. Good job. Next on the list is Daniel Abraham, who I haven't read from, so I asked my friend Tori from Tori Talks to weigh in on this one. Hey Murphy, I have read Daniel Abraham's Long Price Quartet, or at least three quarters of it. If you are a character-driven reader, this series is like an absolute feast. These books have such an incredible, intimate character study of what happens when the decisions you make over a lifetime affects the world around you. I found myself going back so many times and rereading and just soaking in the concepts and the dialogue with this story. It's absolutely incredible. Perfect, we have our second check mark. Next book on the list is The 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. And I don't quite understand this recommendation, if I'm honest. If this, if this was the Broken Earth trilogy, even just the first book, I would give you a resounding yes, because I think the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy is a near masterpiece. But 100,000 Kingdoms, I don't quite feel that way about, so. This one's gonna have to be a no from me. Next up, we have more books I haven't read yet. We have Dragon's Bane and The Dragon Prince. I haven't read either of these, so I asked my friend Nico from Nico's Book Reviews to weigh in. Dragon's Bane by Barbara Hambly. This is a good one. Uh, this is like the classic, you know, trying to slay a dragon type of tale, but with a lot of twists and kind of subversions. So uh, really sell it book, this one. Okay, Dragon's Bane was a yes. Dragon Prince. Um, I tried the first chapter of this for a video, and I, I do plan to still get to it. Uh, I'm a little worried it's going to be a bit too romancy for me, uh, but I'll, I'll get to it eventually. I haven't done the whole thing yet, though. Seems definitive enough. We're going to go ahead and say no for Dragon Prince. Next up is Anne McCaffrey. I actually lied. I've read seven items on this list, and this is the other one I have read, Dragon Riders of Pern, and I didn't like it. We're just gonna do an X. Next up, Tagana, specifically, and I know my friend Jimmy from the Fantasy Network has read that. Tagana by Gagar of is a sweeping, epic fantasy tale uh, talking about a black sorcery curse over people who have no land. They can't even remember their great city, which was called Tagana, of course, before. And these people are trying to find their way, a shattered people with their culture destroyed, history forgotten, and trying to find their way into this world to break this curse. And uh, this is one that I thought nine months ago when I read it was gonna be an absolute grand slam, except I didn't like it at all. I thought there was some interesting magic, but honestly, I thought the characters were uh, a bit odd and not all that sympathetic. Uh, the whole cause of learning about Tagana and bringing it back just never really resonated with me. However, I will say, if you're really into weird, incestuous sex scenes, then this one could be for you. Sounds like a no. Okay, next up is Patrick Rothfuss, and I agree his writing is amazing. These books are flawed, and yet, <laughs> I love especially The Name of the Wind so much. And yeah, I think that this is a stellar recommendation. I think The Name of the Wind is a great book. Check. 
Skipping over Dragon's Bane because Nico already handled that one. And now we have Robin Hobb. Now, I love the Live Ship Trader trilogy. I think that this is a phenomenal trilogy about live ships, ships that are sentient, but truly a family saga. Hob can just take this very wide scale thing and hone it in on just a few characters and make each of these characters feel so alive. The ones that you love and the ones that you want to hang, Kyle. However, Sanderson specifically recommended Fitz. <laughs> I don't like Fitz. I'm about to start the second trilogy. Um, the, I don't even remember what it's called. The second Fitz trilogy. And I'm willing to give Fitz one more chance. And hopefully I will be able to stand him. But as it stands at the moment, he gets a big ol' X. Next up, Brent Weeks. I've read two of the uh, Lightbringer series i really enjoyed book one and then i bounced off of book two and i never finished the quartet so i can't tell you if it's worth reading i can tell you that i had mixed feelings about it but generally i can definitely see the appeal but i do have an agenda with this video so let me do a quick tally okay the x's are winning which is good but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep up that pattern and we'll give it an x since i didn't see it through that's my rationale his next recommendation is to read at least one book from steven erickson george rr R. martin and jim butcher this is an excellent recommendation especially for aspiring writers because all three of these authors write very they have very different strengths but what they're strong at they are very strong at. All three of them have different world building strategy, different pacing strategies, different characterization strategies, but they all do it uniquely, really impressively. So I think that this is a great recommendation to at least read one of each of these, even just, I guess, even just for from a reading perspective, so you can kind of get an idea of, okay, what do I like? But from a writing perspective, this is, this is a great list. Scott Lynch could have made the list. I'm just saying he could have been there, but you know, it's a great list. However, you cheated, and this is three recommendations in one, so you get an X. Final recommendation is Uglies, which I haven't read, but I asked my friend Cam from Cam Reads, and he has, so here he is. Uglies by Scott Westerfeld. So I totally read that, and I really enjoyed it. It is the first book of a sci-fi dystopian young adult trilogy that has some really interesting themes that it likes to wear explicitly on its sleeves. The story is essentially about a young girl who has to decide upon her 16th birthday to undergo major plastic surgery like the rest of society, because at that age, everyone undergoes these surgeries in order to become their most idealized selves. And somehow, through dystopian sci-fi young adult shenanigans, this creates what is essentially a perfect society. It's a post-money society and everything. Except we don't know whose perception of perfection is the gold standard. And there are some people who definitely don't even want to undergo surgery because they appreciate the way they were born and they want to stay that way. So it creates really interesting conflicts. So thanks to some really interesting characters, some really compelling themes, and some really interesting settings, I think this series is still totally set up for a good adaptation. Maybe a Netflix adaptation sometime time in the future because it is definitely the kind of story that can stand the test of time. That is a check. Okay, final tally. We have five checks and seven X's. This is completely unbiased. I was very fair in my judgment and it didn't work out. So it's time to call Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me on. So I have this list. I found a very current, very recent list on your website showing what books you recommend to readers. We know that you're capable of writing books, but we just wanted to see if you could uh, recommend them. And we wanted to see if your taste was good. So I ran this through a very official calculator just to see. Um, and unfortunately, the results did come back negative. So unfortunately, it has been definitively decided that you don't have good reading taste and uh, you have to stop recommending books. So I'm very sorry to deliver this news, but it is what the people want. You know what? This thing sucks that I have to deal Bloop. with. 